Hey, what's up guys? Jeremy Trone here from the beautiful Caribbean on Union Island. For the one that haven't watched my past videos or followed me on social media, let me introduce you to what I do and my next video project. So I was born in south of France, as you can hear with my accent, and I moved to Martinique when I was only a few months old, so I spent all my childhood there. It's another Caribbean island, a little bit more north from here. Growing up on an island, I spent my whole youth in the ocean, surfing, diving, going fishing. It was always fun. And around 1999, 2000, I built my first kite and I started kite surfing. The year passed and I got lucky enough to become a professional kite surfer. So I started traveling the world and used my passion for photography and videography to share all these experiences. As I was traveling, every time I was getting to a new place, I was wondering, could I live here? Would this be a potential home for me? But I was always missing the Caribbean vibe that you can't find anywhere else. And this is why I decided to base myself here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines on a beautiful island we call Union Island. Living here, I started my own business, the JD Pro Center Kite Surfing School, and I still ride professionally for one of the coolest skateboarding brands on the market, North Skateboarding. Now that you got a good introduction of what I do and where I am, I would like to introduce you to my new video series, Island Life. Freedom Island. Of the island, so if you're shipwrecked, know that you're invited. Genuine vibes of mingling tribes. We feel no differences on them. We thrive when you arrive, dispose extravaganzas. A man's ego is the greatest propaganda. Keep you blind to the feet. So, I started Island Life to give you a cool insight on what it takes to live on a little Caribbean island like Union Island. I'm gonna try to cover as many things as possible, whether it is the very fun days we have out or the little struggle we can find when we start a business, for example. Union Island is located in the South Caribbean between North America and South America. Let me show you on the map. So if you have a closer look at the Caribbean, at the north you have North America, at the south is South America, and right in between you have all the small islands of the Caribbean. South from the island of Martinique, you'll meet St. Lucia, and south from St. Lucia, you'll meet St. Vincent. And south from the island of St. Vincent, you'll meet the Grenadine Islands. So Union Island is the further south of the Grenadines, located right here. One of the things I love about the Caribbean is even though all the islands are very close to each other, they're all very different, and each island has its own particularity. For example, St. Vincent, uh, it's very untouched and have amazing waterfalls. And right next to it, the Grenadines, you have some of the most amazing, beautiful beach, a crystal clear water and amazing white sand. So if you want to escape, you could just take a boat or a small little plane and end up on a completely different country that's only a few miles away from here. Okay, so the weather on Union Island is 30 degrees all year long and the water is not far from that. The island is three miles long and one mile wide. So it seems pretty small, but it's hilly landscape make it look much bigger. So wherever you go, you never see the end of the island. One of the questions I get asked the most when you live on a small island like this is, don't you get bored here? And, and we don't actually. It's small, but there's so much to do. There's beaches all around. Uh, you can go fishing, you can go surfing, you can go kite surfing. There's always something to do. And um, if you get bored with the island, you can just go to the neighbor island and find another things to do. Uh, Union Island has two little villages, Ashton and Clifton. Clifton is the most touristic place of the island where all the restaurants and businesses are located. And Ashton has a lot of people living there. It's a very, really nice little town as well. There's 3,000 people living on Union Island, so that means more or less everybody know everybody here. Union Island has its own bank, a uh, post office, a little hospital we call the Health Center, which has one of the most beautiful view I have ever seen for a hospital or even a house in the world. Uh, we have several little bars and restaurants all around the island, really cool places to hang out, a nightclub, 
a couple of supermarkets, uh, hotels and a marina. So there's a lot to do here. And we also have very decent internet connection and very good Wi-Fi. And above all, we have one of the best kitesurfing schools in the whole Caribbean, the JT Pro Center. Luckily enough, we have our own little international airport here with daily flight from Barbados and St. Vincent. The people here are super friendly and always helpful with everybody. The Grenadines is a world famous sailing destination with the Tobago Keys Marine Park with a beautiful water where you can swim with turtles. So a lot of sailboats come here to visit this amazing park. Union Island is located only a couple miles away from the Tobago Keys, so it has become a hotspot for all the sailors to come and visit the Grenadines. So by introducing a kite surfing school on Union Island a couple years back, we really started to bring a lot more tourism to the island. A lot more people are starting to come to just kite here. It's an amazing kite surfing destination and we're very happy for that. The kite center keeps me busy a good half of the year from November to July. But after that, it's a low season and we have time for ourselves to start fixing things and enjoying and discovering a little bit more of the island. So yes, I'm lucky enough to live in paradise. But living far away from everything, like here, has its challenges. And you will see in the next videos that not everything is always very smooth. We have a lot of things we have to, to deal with when we're so far away from anywhere else. One thing is for sure, I would not trade this for anything else. I hope you guys had a good understanding of what I'm doing here and what the next video is going to be about. So you guys can now subscribe to the channel to get notified the next time I will upload the first episode of Island Life. It was a really long day filming this first episode of Island Life. I hope you really enjoyed it. I'm heading out for a quick last kite session. Baby fly. Yeah man, this is island life. We all know the finest diamonds are graded by the four C's. Color. Clarity. Cut. Carrot. Visit Colombian Emeralds International and ask them to show you what I just brought back from the mines. Colombian Emeralds International. And if it wasn't for people that were kind and generous to really come out and experience it, I think that you know we wouldn't have the fighting chance that we do. I believe that we have a lot of potential here. We got a lot of really good, uh, really good-hearted people that that kind of we're all like-minded, and we we just want things to be better.
all know the finest diamonds are graded by the four C's. Color. Clarity. Cut. Carrot. Visit Colombian Emeralds International and ask them to show you what I just brought back from the mines. Colombian Emeralds International. Hey there, fellow travelers. Mark here with Walter's World, and today we're here on Key Coker in Belize. And today what we have for you are what you should eat and enjoy when you are here in Belize. And you know, anywhere you're gonna go, there's gonna be good foods, there's gonna be interesting foods, and there's gonna be knock your sock off foods, right? And probably the thing you're gonna start off with here in Belize, if you're on the coast, you're on the keys, you're on the coastline, the beaches, it's the seafood. I mean, it is fantastic here, but I will say, the one that really knocked our socks off was the grilled lobster. Oh my God, like, could I have some more grilled lobster, please? And another one, and another one, and another one. It is so good. So you do have that, but there's all kinds of other seafood you can enjoy when you're here. There's plenty of different fish when you're here to try. I had a barracuda steak the other night, which was really good. You got fillets, all kinds of really good fish that you're gonna have when you are here. Also, if you're here on the Keys and you're going snorkeling, you'll see a lot of conch shells. Well, guess what? All those times they stabbed you in the toes when you were snorkeling and stuff like that, this is your chance to get them back because they make really good conch fritters here you're gonna have, which is also really good. And honestly, anything with shrimp, you might have a coconut curry shrimp or, or different kind of shrimp dishes and stuff like that, all kinds of really good stuff. So the seafood is definitely a must when you're here. Now, you're also gonna see, for the second thing you're gonna eat here is, there's actually some non-seafood things you're gonna have because if you go inland especially you're gonna have some really good stewed meats and for me it's the stewed chicken I mean the stewed chicken here is awesome and like fall off the bone good oh it is so good and the thing is you might have jerk chicken as well when you're here another option especially on the Caribbean side of Belize which is really good but also I'd say it's you're gonna see a lot of grilled meats as well going along with this kind of meat theme and one of the things you'll see is they love their barbecue here you'll see people out having their grills out and they'll just make an outdoor barbecue and sell food from there, which actually makes for a lot cheaper alternative than going into a restaurant, especially if you're gonna be like in San Pedro or here in Key Coco where there's a lot of tourism. Those outdoor bars and grills kind of stuff really can save your bank quite a bit and also give you a nice little <clears throat> full tummy while you're at it. Now the thing you should know about the, the stewed chicken and the, and the barbecue and just pretty much anything you have when you are here, the third thing you're really gonna have when you are here is rice and beans. Yes, plain old rice and plain old beans, you'll have those together, or you might have beans and rice, which actually is two different dishes. So you might have stewed beans with coconut rice and stuff like that. That's actually really good by itself. I know Liam has enjoyed that. He's like, you know, I'm good. I don't need any lobster. I just want my rice and beans. And he's been super happy. And if you're a vegetarian, the fruit here is amazing. You have amazing fruit juices. We've got great watermelon juice, papaya juice, orange juice, all kinds of great stuff you will have it. So that's really a nice thing. Now the next thing I recommend you have when you do come here is you see some of these outdoor stands and stuff like that. If they have salbutes and ganaches. If you're not sure what those are, if you know what a tostada is, it's like you know the, the flat fried corn shell and they put lettuce and stuff on top of it. They have those here too, but the, these are actually a smaller version of that. If you have the garnaches, they're a small fried corn tortilla and they'll put shredded, uh, on, well first it's beans, right? Like refried beans kind of stuff. Then shredded cabbage and shredded onion on there. That's really good. And the salbutes are a little bit different they have, it's a different it's a different like shell on the bottom kind of stuff and that's got a little more stuff to it you're gonna have some maybe some shredded chicken on there some jalapeno of course the beans a little cheese oh my god these things are like your morning wake up snack or afternoon snack or hangover snack or just because oh my god they're so good I'm going to eat them snack okay so speaking of tasty snacks if you're gonna be in one of those places that might have those um, there's another thing you want to try it's called a fry jack if you're not sure what a fry jack is is basically they take dough you know they flatten it out and then they throw it in a fryer and let it fry up and it actually puffs up and it is so good and you can have it like my favorite is just having it with cinnamon and honey oh Jenny's here in Key Coker she does a great job check her out Sarah I said hi 
they have that or you can get it maybe with eggs and ham in it or beans and eggs in there for breakfast or you can have all kinds of cheese or stuff like that put into it so you might fold it up into it but that's one of those things that I really like when I've been here and I've had it here I've had it out inland in San Ignacio and other places so that's kind of like a nice breakfast thing to have when you're here but also a nice thing to have anytime when you are here in in Belize. Now the next thing I should probably talk about are the drinks when you're here and you're gonna see if you're looking for adult beverages Belican is like the only beer you find throughout the country. Um, you'll notice they have like usually a little napkin in it. Just wipe off your lid before you drink. Um, that's what I recommend. Also, if you have glass bottles of Coke or Fanta. The red Fanta here, it's awesome. It's like Inca Cola from Peru. It's really good. But you want to wipe off the glass bottle tops, okay? Just, just have my eyes for that one. Um, but for like other alcoholic drinks, there's tons and tons and tons of rum drinks because there's rums like a local drink here. So you have a lot of different opportunities to have mixed drinks. Make with the local rum, can't go wrong with that. For non-alcoholic drinks, um, you're going to see a lot of fruit juices, like I said before, and those are always my go-to, like breakfast ever we've had. The papaya juice and watermelon juice, because that's what's in season while we're here now, has been great. But whatever the, the drink is, whatever is popular, whatever fruit is popular at that time, have the seasonal juice when you're here. And I know for some travelers, they worry about, can I drink the water in Belize? Yes, you can drink the water in Belize, like you brush your teeth, no problem. I wouldn't recommend it. It's not very tasty. Go buy water uh, and have that. I know the hotel we're staying at here, they give us bottles of water every day to make sure. So if you're especially on the Keys, bottled water is the best way to go, but you're not going to get sick from brushing your teeth or anything like that, so don't worry. Um, some other things I want to tell you about when you do go out to eat here, you do need to have a lot of patience. It takes a while to get seated, it takes a while to get your order in, it takes a while to get your food, it takes a while to get your bill, and you need to ask each time. But the thing is, the people here are super friendly, so it's not like you, you don't need to get upset. Just remember, go slow. Just go slow here in Belize, okay? You have that kind of nice feel, and so just, just remember to have some patience when you're ordering. Um, if you want to pay, cash is best. They take U.S. dollars or Belize dollars here. It's no problem whatsoever. It's two to one to Belize for one US. Um, if you want to pay with credit cards uh, at restaurants, like nicer restaurants, they will take it. Um, I have seen some places will charge you a, like a fee in order to use the credit card. So have a heads up for that one. If it's the price a bit more than what they said it would be uh, just for just for that one. Um, but what I'd say is what we found is you have restaurants all over. You can do those things. No problem. The, the local Belizean restaurants, you know, four walls, the kitchen, it's just kind of a good thing. Um, but if you're going here on the beaches or you're going to be out and you see people grilling out and stuff like that and the locals eating there, go check that out because I guarantee the person cooking is going to be funny, the person serving you is going to be nice and sweet, and the food is going to be fantastic. So whether you're having that kind of jerk chicken here in the Caribbean or the stewed chicken up in the mountains or you're going to have any, any of the seafood, especially the grilled lobster, you will enjoy eating here in Belize. So there's one thing you really need to know is that they love their Maurice Sharps hot sauce here in uh, in Belize. No matter what you have, whether it's fried lobster here, or coconut, or if you're having anything, they love this stuff. So this is one of the things you're going to eat when you're here. It's definitely having some Maurice Sharps hot sauce, okay? So uh, enjoy. All right. I have this lovely grilled lobster. In the States, we were steam them, which y'all like. Oh my gosh. Real spices. Are you making fun of me? No. Y'all are like, it's so good. Come here, baby. Bring your mouth. Tell me it's not awesome. So I hope that helps you know a bit more about coming here and what to enjoy when you are here, aside from the great snorkeling and the Mayan ruins and all these kind of things. Um, if you want to learn more, maybe 10 things that shock tourists when they come to Belize, or you want some more like background, what should I know before I come to Belize? Check us out on our website at waltersworld.com. Riaz Phillips is a man on a mission. For a year now, he's been traveling across the UK, sampling African and Caribbean cuisine at over a hundred places, finding out about the people and stories behind the food. So you're gonna take me to some of your favorite places? Yeah, so the good thing about London is because of all the different cultures, there's so much on offer from like West African, East African and Caribbean. 
So right now we're at Mango Rooms in Camden Town. Mountain. Riaz's family are Jamaican and while he's grown up eating African and Caribbean food, he struggled to find books about it, so decided to research and write his own. I basically wanted to go and meet the people and see the food behind all these places that people see throughout their day, but they don't really engage with that much. Or then maybe they're a bit scared to go inside. And he's been speaking to people like Roger. I grew up in Jamaica. I learned a lot of this from my grandmother, because my grandmother used, my two grandmothers used to be fantastic cook. I come from a big family, so I've been cooking since I was 12 for like 15 people. Mango Room's owner says he's seen Caribbean food increase in popularity over the years, with more restaurants popping up across the capital. I started here about 17 years ago, just with one room, basically one room and then I extend. A lot of people want Caribbean food now. Riaz's book focuses on Caribbean food, but he's already working on another about West African cuisine. We've got yam porridge here. This family-run Nigerian takeaway began life in the 90s and is popular with locals, but Nigerian food has yet to catch on with the wider public. Every time we get um, new customers from different cultures coming in, they, they quite like it and it's something that they've never tried before. So I think it's just getting it out there. Caribbean food, a lot of it is inherently based on West African culture and tradition that was brought over. Uh, the roots are very similar, so you've got loads of rice dishes, a lot of stew dishes, uh, fried plantain, uh, you've got like starchy dough, bulls, so they've got a puff puff in West Africa, but we have like festivals and like dump dumplings, dumplings and yeah. fried dumplings. Uh, so yeah, there's so many similarities. Riaz's first book, Bellyful, is finished. He's now crowdfunding to get it published. He hopes his food journey will encourage others to learn about and, of course, try a variety of African and Caribbean food. Tolua Doye, BBC London News.